Let's start by discussing the various configurations for nonlinear analysis. I took the liberty of already defining a certain object or a structure, uh, let's call it a continuum in this case, to be in three different uh, configurations. Starting with the base, moving on to the reference, and finally to the current. You can generally uh, represent the base by writing either CB or C0, or at C at 0, and the current configuration just as C or C at the time T. Now the reference configuration is an intermediate configuration which is used in some of the nonlinear analysis, while in other cases it coalesces with the base configuration. For As a, a starting point, we just leave it as it is. But you can always assume that the base configuration and the reference configuration can be um, used as one and the same configuration. Now, in the nonlinear analysis, because there is a there's going to be a large deformation or large displacement, and as I already explained to you, everything has to be uh, described in the uh, in, on the basis of the deformed uh, geometry. With respect to that, we need to define two different uh, frames, yeah? reference frames or coordinate systems. The first uh, reference frame is called the material uh, global frame, which is shown by the capital XYZ axis. And the other one is the spatial global frame, which is shown with the small, uh, with the lowercase x, y, z. In this uh, example, we've taken it to be identical. But of course, you can also use it as different ones. And then you have a transformation between the two different coordinate systems, as you already know how to do from previous experience. So in that way, we can also use this material and spatial reference frames to be as base frame or a current reference frame. There is a point P in the continuum at the base uh, frame. And this can be written as P0. The distance for P0 from the global frame can be easily found out as capital X is equal to X0, for example. And in the same way, when uh, at a time t, under certain loading condition or certain displacement control condition, you have a deformation because of which this point P0 has moved within the continuum to a different location, which is shown as P of x. Now, the distance from the base frame can also be calculated for Px as x is equal to x of t. And Therefore, we can, if we know these vectors, then we can easily calculate the distance between the base and the current configuration. Now, this is given as u is equal to x minus capital X. And of course, with u, I mean the displacement that has occurred between the two points, uh, between the same point actually, between the, from one uh, configuration, which is the base or the reference configuration, to the current configuration under the under certain load or displacement controlled operation in the analysis. Now the meaning of the reference frame depends upon the description for the nonlinear analysis that has been chosen. There are three different uh, descriptions that are generally configurations which are used in uh, commonly within the nonlinear analysis. They are the total Lagrangian, the updated Lagrangian or the co-rotational description. The Lagrangian is of course opposed to the Eulerian uh, method. In the Lagrangian, you actually consider the uh, motion or the displacement of a certain solid from one frame to the other. And in, a, in an Eulerian, you consider a certain control volume through which a certain fluid is passing. Therefore, it obviously makes more sense to have it uh, suited to much more uh, fluid dynamics problems rather than solid mechanics problems. Uh, but in general, the total Lagrangian, updated Lagrangian and co-rotational are used commonly within the non-linear analysis specifically for solid mechanics or structural uh, situations. Within the total Lagrangian formulation, the base and the reference are considered to be coalesced. Therefore, we can say that the base and the reference are one they remain fixed throughout the solution process. It is most suited to solid and structural mechanics problems 
which have moderate displacements and moderate strains. It is used mostly for elastic materials. The updated Lagrangian formulation is different in a way that the base configuration remains the same. The base configuration is fixed, but the reference configuration is periodically updated for the updated Lagrangian and therefore the name. The strategy for updating the reference configuration is either to set the reference configuration to the current solution, so it basically converges to this part, or to the last convert solution uh, in your analysis steps. This particular uh, configuration is suited to solid and structural mechanics problems with finite displacements and possibly large strains. Therefore, we are looking for large deformation behavior. You can have forming processes, you can have hardening processes, etc. The final one is the co-rotational formulation. The co-rotational formulation makes sure that a local coordinate system is attached to each element within the continuum. The ele this coordinate system translates and rotates with the element as the deformation proceeds. The global coordinate system always remains fixed, but this elemental coordinate system is going to translate and rotate. The element deformation is decomposed into a rigid body component, which is identical to the rigid body motion of the local system and, and a straining component, which is described by means of degrees of freedom in the local system. So what we do is that in this case, we describe it in two separate components so that they can be addressed independently. So first you do a displacement and then you do a deformation. Solid and structural mechanics problems which have arbitrarily large finite motions but you have small strains in these problems are the ones that are basically used with the co-rotational configuration. 